To be fair, the Magic Speed series from ASICS has always been a series that they seem to continually change because they're trying to find really what it's best for. But last year, in 2023, ASICS came out with this shoe, the Magic Speed 3. And this shoe was a revelation. This was probably one of the best tempo trainers, traditional tempo trainers, to ever be made. Not just last year, just in general. And I made a ton of content about this shoe, why it was so good. Now, it was one of these, again, traditional tempo shoes. It was low-ish to the ground, but not minimalist by any means. It was in a training foam, FF Blast Plus, which is a foam that I don't necessarily love, but it had that super stiff ASICS carbon fiber plate with an exaggerated toe spring in it. So you put that stiff plate in that mushy FF Blast Plus foam, and they sort of canceled each other out. And you got just a beautiful ride that was very propellant forward. Put a really lightweight, excellent fitting race fit upper on that shoe, and you had the makings of an excellent tempo trainer, something for intervals, reps, you know, fast running. And it was absolutely outstanding. Like I said, I made a ton of content on this shoe. I'll put a link to all of it in the description. So when I started to see the leaked images of the Magic Speed 4 and where ASICS was going with that, I was concerned. But when we actually saw the shoe and we got the specs on it, I was disgusted. This shoe, the ASICS Magic Speed 4, doesn't need to exist. There's no point in this shoe. And it's just another generic super trainer. And super trainer is a word I don't like. And it's something that I'm not going to be using anymore on this channel. And this is the video of me stating why. Now back to the Magic Speed 4, because I think it's symbolic of the shift that's happening. Now. This shoe, again, didn't need to exist because there's really no purpose in the ASICS lineup. And this makes me wonder where this shoe came from, why ASICS developed this shoe, because ASICS is a very innovative company, and especially over the past four or five years, they've been very, very on the mark with what they've been doing. So there's really one of two reasons for this shoe's existence. The first one is that ASICS uh, developers and engineering saw a need for this shoe. Okay, ASICS, like I said, is a very innovative company and they have a great R&D department in Kobe, Japan, and they do really good work. They're maybe not the first on new trends and ideas, but if they adopt something, they usually do it really well. But there's already a bunch of other overlap with the Magic Speed 4 and in this idea of a super trainer in the ASICS lineup. So. I don't really buy this. Plus, there's other shoes in the ASICS lineup that kind of do this better. The ASICS S4 comes to mind. Now, that's a shoe made for sub four hour marathoners. It's only available in Japan, but it's a much more interesting shoe. It's a much more versatile and much better shoe than the ASICS Magic Speed 4. So the second reason, and this is the one I'm leaning towards, and this is the jaded runner in me, but also the jaded product designer, is that the Magic Speed 4 was a marketing-led project. Marketing led this one because they wanted to make money and cash in on this whole super trainer thing. Because, you know, tech for tech's sake and just making another generic super trainer, and again, all of these super trainers are sort of morphing into the same shoe, that's gonna sell. That's obviously what people want, right? Because they're selling another brand. So ASIC's marketing team, or, you know, the uh, financial team really wanted this shoe in the lineup. If that's the case, that makes me concerned for ASICS's future. Again, they have, they've developed a lot of goodwill over the past four or five years with all of these innovations and become a real darling of the running space. But if this is their new direction, eh, that makes me a little worried for them. So this super trainer thing, again, a word I don't like, it really originates from this shoe, the Nike Tempo Next Percent. Now I have a whole video that traces the lineage about how this shoe was really the first super trainer, where it came from, what it led to. Go check that out, I'll put a link in the description. But this was the model really for the super trainer, the shoe with a ton of tech that was trickled down from the super shoes that was meant for everyday training, Though when Nike first released this shoe, I don't think they meant it as a daily trainer. They meant it as a trainer that everyone could use whenever they need to because it's not going to hold you back. And I specifically remember that from a lot of the videos and marketing around this shoe would have released in 2020. But this set that blueprint of 
a higher stack, a plate of some sort, generally carbon fiber, and a lot of tech that's trickling down from the top tier ratios. And that's exactly what ASICS has done with the Magic Speed 4, especially with the, you know, carrier foam and then the little puck of FF Turbo in it. It just, it's, it's whatever. It's just generic now. It lost its use case and the brilliance of the Magic Speed 3. And now we just got something that's just kind of meh, whatever. And to be fair, this shoe has been, I would call it somewhat positively reviewed, but it's more like a 55, 45, 60, 40 split. It's a little positive, but generally people are either really confused by it or they're just sort of like, it's good, but there's better options out there. Whereas the Magic Speed 3, I think a lot of people who really love that style of shoe, myself included, loved that shoe. And we still love that shoe. But this is where it gets really confusing and convoluted for the ASICS lineup because ASICS has better shoes that do what the Magic Speed 4 is meant to do. If you want a long run shoe, a shoe dedicated for long running, Super Blast 2. That's exactly the use case that shoe's designed for, and it's going to do it better, uh, completely outclass the Magic Speed 4 in every count. You want a long run trainer with some fast speed in there, particularly half or full marathon pace? Again, that's the Super Blast 2. It's going to completely outclass the Magic Speed 4. You want a fast shoe for fast work, whether that's intervals and reps, or say 1K repeats, or even like 5K repeats. Well, that is what the Magic Speed 4 can do, but I'm going to make the argument that the MetaSpeed Paris series now is very versatile, very durable, and it's going to be your better option for that. And frankly, the Super Blast 2 also is probably a better option for more runners than the Magic Speed 4. And if you want the true tempo trainer now, well, ASICS also has that now with the recently redesigned Hyperspeed 4, which is now an excellent traditional tempo trainer non-plated as well in the ASICS lineup. And that brings me back to the super trainer term or thing. Now, if it originated with the Nike Tempo Next Percent in 2020, and again, I have a video on that which has this diagram in it and all leads to these shoes, though I did include the Super Blast in the Adidas Boston 12 in that list, which I've changed my thoughts on those two shoes a little bit, talked a lot about that on this channel. But two of those shoes, mainly these two shoes, the Saucony Canvara Pro, which has to be one of the worst concepted shoes in the history of running shoes, it's so bad and poorly executed that it's almost worthy of a business school case study about how not to make and launch and market a product. That's how bad that shoe is. And then you have the Hoka Mach X, which wasn't as bad as the Convara Pro, but still kind of missed the mark for a lot of people who particularly loved the mock and expected something very different from that shoe. But last year in 2023, these two shoes really, to me, are the high water mark, or the peak of the whole Super Trainer things. These two shoes became that template of the Super Trainer. Tech for tech's sake, which originates from a trickle down idea of taking Super Shoe stuff and making it everyday, usable, democratizing it. But then you just get to these shoes that they're definitely things you can't use for daily training because they're too stiff, they're too play, they're, they're too high. They're just kind of a mess. They're not things you want to be doing daily running in. You want any number of other shoes for that across all brands. But they're not as fast or as useful and frankly, often not as durable or not that much more durable than a proper super shoe, which is going to be faster and more fun to run in. Now, there are some use cases for these super trainers, but they're edge cases. You know, they're going to be people who have very specific needs or want very specific things. Most people are going to be better served by a more traditional daily trainer or actually just go getting a super shoe. This is where it begins to get interesting for me. So if we have the Saucony Convara Pro and the Hoka X from 2023 as the high water mark for their whole super trainer thing, and we have now the ASICS Magic Speed 4 is sort of ASICS's version of that, probably led by the marketing department. Who knows? This is where this gets interesting. And this is why I'm also going to stop using the term super trainer, because again, I don't think it means anything, but I find the whole super trainer thing is now blowing apart into a couple other types of shoes. And this is way more interesting than the generic plated shoe for everyday running, which we were sold with the original Super Trainer concept. 
And what's really interesting here is ASICS also has these other two types of shoes that I think are going in these other directions, mainly the Super Blast 2 and the Hyperspeed 4, which I've already talked about. Now, if we go down the middle path of the ASICS Magic Speed 4, that leads us into these types of shoes, you know, the Hokamak X2, the Puma shoe I'm not going to mention on this channel anymore, the Nike Zoomfly 6 that will soon be out. Again, these are just generic uh, super trainer concepts that really, they're not that great. They, they're not as good as a super shoe and they're not as versatile as a daily trainer. But what I would argue to call them now instead of super trainer is plated performance trainer. I think performance trainer is the name I'm going to start using for these types of shoes. And these are the plated variant of the performance trainer. But this is where I think it's really getting interesting because I think the product teams are now looking at what's coming next. They've sort of milked the super trainer archetype and, and template for all it can be. And now the smart product teams, I think, are looking at other areas. And that's where we're getting these other two categories, mainly something that looks like the Super Blast 2 and the Hyperspeed 4. So if we go with the Hyperspeed 4, this is getting into this category of shoes like the Hoka Mach 6 the New Balance Rebel V4 and the Nike Pegasus Plus. I'm going to call these non-plated performance trainers. These are shoes that have all the promise of what the super trainer was supposed to do, but in a non-plated variant. And now as we're seeing in the Pegasus Plus, getting a true super foam in there, not some Piba EVA blend like the Rebel V4, not some super critical EVA like the Hoka Mach 6, but a true super foam, not watered down. And I think that trend is going to even continue. I think we're going to see more shoes like the Pegasus Plus coming out in the next year or so. And I've talked about this on the channel. I'll put a link in the description to the video I get into that. But these are very interesting shoes because they have all of the performance of those plated performance trainers, but they're in a shoe that is usable more for daily running because there's no plate in it. And you're going to get a better training effect. You're going to build foot strength. You're going to work on your stride and your foot strike. You're going to get a much bigger training benefit from this style shoe um, than you would on those plated performance trainers. And then the, on the other side of this, we have the Super Blast-esque shoe, which also is related to the Adidas Prime X2 Strung, that platform. And I'm going to call these performance max trainers. And these are things like the Hoka Skyward X, the Mizuno Neo Vista, and you know some new ideas from On and New Balance, mostly in the Balos, that are kind of taking the idea of the plated performance trainer and just maximizing it, just exploring the really outer reaches of it. You want more foam? Great. You want more plates? Great. You want more technology or you want more ideas, more geometry, whatever that is. These are sort of the just, there's no rules. We're just really going to explore the boundaries of what a performance trainer can be. And that's why I'm calling them a performance max trainer. They're not really max performance. They're just more performance max. These are shoes that I am very much not interested in running in at all. These are probably uh, about as far away from the shoes I'm interested in actually having on my feet as you could possibly get. But from a technical standpoint, I do find them very interesting because again, these product teams are really exploring the boundaries of what's possible here, and that's pretty interesting. And that's why this shoe, the A6 Magic Speed 4, is just sort of, why does this exist? Because there's so many other interesting shoes out there in that category or in these new directions, which again, A6 already covers, that are going to completely sidestep this style of shoe. And that I find quite interesting. But again, like I said, that's where I begin to worry about where A6 is headed, if we're going to see more of these types of shoes than all of the shoes that I think they're getting right, like the Super Blast and the Hyperspeed, where is it going to leave those? So it's it's an interesting point of divergence for ASICs as a brand right now. Because again, they've developed a lot of goodwill in running, but if they keep putting out products that just really miss the mark or really are unexciting or just really uninnovative, they're going to lose that and, and that will be a shame. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you find this content useful, consider subscribing. You'll see more content from me pop up in your feed. If you already are subscribed, I've now enabled memberships on this channel. Click the join button below the video title or use the link in the description if you're in the YouTube app on an iOS device to find out more. Neither one of those options are great. Leave a like on this video, leave a comment because that helps this channel continue to grow, which I always appreciate. And with that, I'll catch you in the next one.